Right, this is the last section of chapter four, and on this one we're going to talk about logarithmic scales. If you watch section six, we solved equations and we're remodeling it. <clears throat> this is pretty similar, uh, where we're trying to uh, use the scales in order to solve it. In previous editions of the book, they used to actually have those two sections combined. They've split it off into two different ones just to make it a little bit more easier and focus a little bit more on the scales versus the equations, but the first one that they're going to refer to is the pH scale. You know, so when you hear of things being pH balanced or if you're looking at pools or anything like that where you have to check the pH level, this is the actual formula that you use to do that. Um, what H plus refers to is the hydrogen ion concentration. Um, if a pH level, for instance, is exactly 7, it's neutral. Less than 7 are acidic and above 7 are basic. So what they're going to do is they're basically going to either give you the pH or give you the hydrogen ion and then you have to find out one or the other. So the first one that they say is they say that a, a sample of human blood had a hydrogen ion concentration of 3.16 times 10 to the negative eighth. What's the pH level? So for this particular thing, all we're going to do is we're going to take negative log 3.16 times 10 to the negative eighth in our calculators and see what comes out. And when we do that, if I remember right, I think we ended up with 7.5. Okay, So 7.5 on a pH level, that would be considered a base because of the fact that it was above 7. So that's as far as if it gives you the hydrogen ion concentration. If it gives you the pH level, like for instance they say that the highest recorded rainfall ever, or most acidic rainfall ever recorded was in Scotland in 1974, which had a pH of 2.4. So now we're trying to find that H+. Plus. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to divide by negative 1. So you get negative 2.4 equals h plus, or log of h plus, sorry. And then you rewrite that as an exponential, which means 10 to the negative 2.4 equals h plus. So that's one way of leaving the answer. Or if you actually type in 10 raised to the negative 2.4, you get 4.0 times 10 to the negative third. And I'm writing that in scientific notation just so that you guys know. Um, it would have came out as point zero zero four and so on. Uh, but that's, I'm just writing it in scientific notation. One of the, it's going to come up with either one or the other uh, where it gives you the pH and you find backwards to find the H plus or it gives you the H plus you got to find the pH level. So that's the first scale that we have. The second scale that we're going to use is the Richter scale. Now where I live we don't have very many earthquakes, if any at all. Okay? I live in North Dakota where our earthquakes, if you even have one, is so small that we don't even notice them. Um, here not last week they saw had one in Montana, which is uh, a neighboring state to us, that I think measured like a five point something and where people actually felt that I had a, one of my friend of mine who was actually out there um, where they actually felt it and something that she had never felt or experienced before uh, but I know that I have relatives that live in California and they've dealt with them I had one uh, when I was actually visiting out there once we experienced one so I have experienced one it's just been a long time since it but just to kind of give you a rundown of what this is, this means intensity, and this means intensity of a standard earthquake. Okay, uh, they've said that the standard intensity earthquake is ten to the negative fourth. So when I put that in there or put that into my problem, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's actually equal to one micron. Um, <clears throat> but 
Anyway, what it's going to say is it's going to say find the magnitude of the earthquake that has an intensity of 3.75. Now, how they get that is the seismographs that they use has a line. You know, like it's got a, a pencil like stuck to a, a thing that's basically just measuring this part on an earthquake. 3.75 would be if they have drawn in what they call a midline, which would be a line right down the middle. It'd be the distance from here to here is 3.75 centimeters. Okay, it's the amplitude of it. That's what it is. So knowing that I have all the different pieces, all I do is I type this in my calculator: log 3.75 divided by 10 caret negative 4. Close it. Hit enter, and I end up with approximately 4.6. Now that number might go on a little bit further, but if you ever hear of earthquakes being measured, they all only go to the tenths decimal place, where um, <clears throat> that's all that they're going to do for that part is they're just going to um, give it to you as one decimal place, okay? Um, the other hand is that's if they give you the intensity. The alternative is what if they give you uh, the magnitude and they want you to work backwards, so, for instance, if they said it was a 5.1 on the Richter scale, I need to work backwards and to find the intensity. And so for that, it was a 5.1 equals the log of I divided by 10 to the negative fourth. And again, remember that's what one micron is. So, <clears throat> in order to do this, and what I would do, since it has the log all by itself, let's rewrite it as an exponential. Base number is a 10. So 10 to the 5.1 equals I divided by 10 to the negative fourth. And in order to get rid of division, you multiply, multiply. Now you can just put that in your calculator, or if you know anything about some exponent powers, when you have a product, you add exponents, so that's the same as 10 to the 1.1, which when you put that in your calculator, will give you approximately 12.6 for intensity-wise. Now to put that in perspective, it would be like this. If you said, you know what, I want you to run one mile, but I over here, the next person, I want you to run 12.6 miles. A little bit different, okay? and 12.6 might not seem like that big a deal, but it is when you talk about it in that particular context. Okay. So, and also 12.6 would be on the seismograph would be how high up it would go on the, on the number line, okay? Then another thing that they do with that one is they also measure intensity differences. So they talk about how one earthquake as compared to another earthquake. Um, they talk about one, a lot of the ones that they you refer to, especially in this book, are the ones in San Francisco that have happened. One of them was in 1989. It measured at 7.1. That one I remember because I was a kid watching the World Series when it happened. Um, there was where it shook and things collapsed. and It was, it was kind of crazy. How, how much it was. The other one that they also often refer to is the 1906 one in San Francisco which measured at 8.3. Now what you're doing here for this particular part is you're figuring out how much more intense was one versus the other. Now if you put it into the formulas and set stuff equal to each other all you're basically doing is you're taking the magnitudes and you're subtracting them from each other and then raising them to the power, or that number, uh, 10 to that power. So for instance, on this particular thing, if you've got a magnitude of 8.3 compared to a 7.1, you subtract the 2, then take 10 raised to that power, and you get approximately 16 times more intense. Okay? So that's kind of saving you some of the time and the math behind it as far as how you would come up with how much more intense was one versus the other. Um, basically just subtract the two magnitudes and then raise it to that power and, and you got the answer. Uh, you could put it into both the formulas, solve for i, 
do some replacing. It's a whole lot more work than, than just doing the simple part of it and kind of saving you some time through that. But that's kind of the, the Richter scale ones. The last scale that they have is decibel. And this deals with your hearing. I again stands for intensity. And IO is initial intensity. There. The initial intensity that they give you is 10 to the negative 12. That's what the initial number is going to be. Um, uh, it's the reference intensity, I guess, is what they're going to call it, um, <clears throat> where they've measured it at that specific sound. It's barely audible, I guess, is what they say. So, anyway, for this one, again, so they're, they're going to say, you know, what's the decibel level of something with intensity of 100, for instance. So they talk about a jet engine having intensity of 100 watts per meter squared. And so what's the decibel level? So again, we're finding B. Oops, why did I put that up there? So we have log of 100 was going in for the I and 10 to the negative 12 was going in for IO. Um, simply put, we can just multiply that all into our calculator. Another thing is is if you want to look at it a different route, we get 10 log, 100 is the same as 10 squared, and if we bring this up here, that's times 10 to the 12th, because it, when you bring a negative exponent up to the top, that turns it into a positive exponent. So I end up with 10 times the log of 10 to the 14th, okay. which might make it a little bit easier to put it into, the, into your... Um, calculator then if you don't want to put it in the calculator remember this is base 10 and 10 and 10 make if that happens then 14 is your number and 10 times 14 is 140 decibels or dbs as they like to put it okay so that's kind of how you use that if they measure what the watts per meter squared is then you can find the actual decibel level so at a gen engine is very very loud when it takes off. Um, and as some of my students who work on an air base, uh, they have to have hearing protection in order to do that. I had one student a couple of years ago that he was an older than average student but did not have that back in when he was in the Air Force and is now uh, needs hearing aids in order to actually hear everything because there was no hearing protection. Now they know. If you ever watch a rock concert, for instance, or any concert for, in for that matter, a lot of performers will have those earpieces in and they're basically saving their ears uh, because of the decibel levels. All right. Then the uh, other option is they're going to tell you um, that heavy traffic is measured at 80 decibels. What's the intensity? So for us, we're going to work backwards in order to find that. So if I know that that was 80, um, yeah, 10 log, I'm trying to find I, and now I work backwards. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to divide everything by 10, which if you didn't watch section 5 or 6, <laughs> we're doing the same thing here. 8 equals log of I over 10 to the negative 12th. Rewrite that as an exponential. I got 10 to the 8th equals I over 10 to the negative 12th times everything by 10 to the negative 12th. And I got 10 to the negative 4th. Oops. Equals I. Or, you know, typing that into your calculator, you get. 1 times 10 to the negative 4th. Oh, that was kind of stupid for me to even type that in. I'm embarrassed that I actually did. Uh, watts per meter squared. Okay, so um, that's kind of one of those things where if you're working backwards to find the intensity, that's how you would do that. So uh, that's it for Chapter 4. Thank you.